Hey guys, Zong here, back with another Logarithms video, and today we will be doing Logarithms Level 3. And this is another Amy problem, it's problem 11, so look at the problem. Don't be discouraged if you get stuck on it, because it is rather hard. And uh, pause the video if you need to. Okay, so here's the solution. So first we notice that log m minus log k is equal to log m over k. Knowing this, we sub it back in. Log m over k is less than, well, absolute value, that's important, log. And knowing this, we have, uh, we have log m over k greater than negative log n but less than log n. So you may be wondering where do we go from here and um, at this point I should probably identify that negative log a over b equals log a 1 over b and why is this? Well if log a over to base a b equals x the negative log a b equals negative x so a to the negative x equals b so 1 over a to the x equals b a to the x equals 1 over b and thus log a 1 over b equals x so uh, knowing this hang on a sec so knowing this identity we get um, we can actually do this and then from here we can actually um, take out the logs to get 1 over n is less than m over k is less than n and from here on it's actually not a logarithm problem anymore but you have to have the skills to simplify it down to this to actually have a chance at solving the problem so um, you can pause the video try, try to solve it again um, just using this and um, yeah okay so if you pause the video whatever if you didn't whatever moving on so um, from this inequality um, we can actually put stuff in terms of k by considering this inequality first and then this inequality so 1 over n less than m over k, m over k less than n. So uh, acting as if these were separate inequalities, we can we can put k we can put these inequalities in terms of k to get um, k is greater than m. Oh, whoops, not n. K is greater than m over n, and k is less than m n to get, ah, why do I keep writing n? To get k is greater than m over n and less than m n. So, uh, getting this, um, becomes actually rather simpler. So, uh, we realize that since there are exactly 50 distinct positive integer k, that each of these, each of these solutions, um, each of these integers must, must be m n minus 1, Okay, k equals m n minus two, m n minus three, and so on, all the way to m. Well, not m over n, but you get the idea, and so on. So there has to be fifty of these things. So uh, in order for that to happen, we we can actually deduce that if there are fifty integer solutions between m n, m over n, and m n, that means that um, m n minus fifty has to be greater than m over n considering that m over n may not definitely not be an integer it may not be an integer so there has to be at least 50 integers between these two so this must be true but there cannot be 51 so um it is actually less than m over n so there can't be 51 so knowing this we can turn this problem into m over n is uh is greater than m n minus 51 but less than m n minus 50 i hope you see why this is true i hope you see how we got here so uh one sec, let me clear up a bit of trash. The trash here. So I can use this column. Um so uh knowing this, we go up here and uh we can simplify this as um individual inequalities as we did before. 
only considering these inequalities. We we can do that as we did before. And actually, if you know a bit of algebra, we can simplify this a bit further. I'll do one of the inequalities so you get the idea. Um, whoops. M. I'll, I'll erase that. Want to be neat. So um, m n minus 51 less than m over n. So if, you, if I solve this inequality, you should get a uh, a hunch on how to do the other one. So uh, so we want to isolate m. Put this inequality in terms of m. So m over, sorry m n minus m over n is less than 51. So m n minus 1 over n is less than 51. So m n squared minus 1 over n is less than 51 so m is less than 51 n over n squared minus 1 and uh, using the same logic we get m is uh, so we get m is uh, less than or equal to so it's less than or equal to I for, I, sorry guys I forgot the lower bound so uh, is less than or equal to um, 51 n over n squared minus 1 was greater than um, 50n over n squared minus 1 so we get this inequality and it looks looks it's in terms of n but you can probably see ew song that looks really icky how are we going to solve this and uh, if, if you guys remember everything from here I'll clear it out and we can keep going so writing rewriting the inequality so you guys don't forget 50n over n squared minus 1 less than or equal to 51 n over n squared minus 1. So knowing this, um, we can we can actually, first we, we have to deduce the range of solutions that this has. So uh, so so let's see, let's consider the case where n equals 1, so n equals 1. Because that's uh, the first positive integer, so that's a good place to start. So n equals 1, then 50, well that, 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 that can't happen because because uh, of this thing. We get a denominator of over zero. Okay, so 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 that uh, n can't equal one. So let's put that in. N cannot equal one. So let's not consider that. Um. So um, knowing this, since n is uh since n is positive, n is greater than one. Okay. So knowing this, uh, let let's see. Test some other cases. You can see that w this is important. So m is greater than or equal to n. So let's 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 take a look at uh, at m is less than or equal to 51 n over n squared minus one. If if n is eight, if n is eight, m is less than. Um, let's see. So so 51 over 51 n over 60. Let's see. 64 minus 1 63 and I know n is supposed to be 8 right here but uh, then we understand that m is uh, less than 51 over 63 and which is 8 and um, n, n is supposed to be 8 but uh, we don't sub it in here so because you know n is supposed to be 8 this is 8 but even knowing that we don't need to sub it in for uh, this uh, for this and because now seeing this we can see that you can clearly see that m is less than um, n, because like it's less than like some fraction of n, so it's less than n overall. So we don't, we since we want n to be greater than n, we we can't have that. So n, so so this applies for all cases where uh, n is greater than eight. So n, we have to know is less than eight. And uh, if n is greater than or equal to eight, we get the same thing like this. The denominator gets this denominator gets really big. And then, uh, and then, uh, so so this nominee gets really big. So uh, we this this fraction grows really uh, smaller, smaller, and it doesn't matter. So and hope you see why n can't be uh, can't be greater than or equal to eight. So it has to be less than eight. So uh, what what range of solutions does this give us? This gives us n. Wow, why did I write that? N two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven. So n is the set of uh, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And uh, 
from here on out we can actually just test these cases we can test uh, so if n equals 2 you can do some calculation just sub it sub it into this inequality you get m is uh, is uh, less than 100 over 3 and greater than 100 over 3 and 102 or less than or equal to 102 over 3 and uh, then you get m to the only integer m can be in here is 34 so if n equals 3 then you uh you can you can just do the calculation yourself sub it into this inequality you get m equals 19 and then uh making our job easier for n and um let's see for any n equals 2 3 4 5 I mean, no, not two and three. Four, five, six, seven. Sorry, guys, my brain is like dead. If for any n of four through seven, m, m is not an integer. So we have the solutions. Um, n is two, thirty-four, and three, nineteen. And giving these solutions, we want to find the sum of all possible values of the product m n. And you do a bit of calculation, you get sixty-eight plus 57 equals 125 and that is the solution hey guys it's Daniel and we're doing yet another logarithm problem this one is from the 2006 Amy 1 problem number 9 so first you can pause the video to do it yourself 